Good morning, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here this morning for this truly remarkable moment in the city's history. My name is Allie Mancini, and I have the privilege of being the Director of Recreation, Parks, and Library for the city. I've been in this field of Parks and Recreation for over 30 years, and during that time, I've had an opportunity to work on many capital improvement projects, mostly parks and community centers, um, but this is a first for me. Having an opportunity to be on this team that's going to bring back this crown jewel to the community has been truly special. We do have a short program today, uh, but before I start, I'd like to acknowledge several of our distinguished guests that are here with us uh, this morning, starting with Mayor Boyles and members of the City Council. I believe we have a representative from Ben Allen's office. Someone here, right there, thank you. And from Congressman Ted Liu's office as well. Thank you for joining us this morning. We also have a couple of former council members here, Scott Nickel and Bill Fisher. Thank you for joining us. Today we officially kick off a very long awaited renovation of the city's beloved Urosari Swim Stadium, known to most of us as the Plunge. This project has been a very long time coming. Many of you that are here today have very personal ties to this facility, having either spent time here yourself or bringing your families over the last 80 years that the facility has been open. This pool has served this community well and faithfully for many, many years. And with these critical renovations, we'll continue to serve this community for many more. Today, we are here to commemorate this important moment in the city's history. You will hear from city leaders and stakeholders and others who have played an active role in getting this project off the ground, and also from those who are assisting to raise additional monies to ensure the pool has everything that's needed to meet the evolving needs of the aquatics community. You'll also hear a bit about the project and the plan improvements from our project manager, Cheryl Ebert. After the short program, we invite you to enjoy light refreshments and to meet the project's team who can answer any additional questions you might have. And so now I'd like to turn it over to Mayor Drew Boyles. Thank you, Allie. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? That's all we got for this incredible opening? Not opening, groundbreaking, excuse me. All right, thank you all very much for joining us today. Uh, this exciting journey, it's been, I don't know how long this has been going on. Somebody in the audience, the Brineys and Lee Davis and others have been working on this probably decades at this point, it feels like, right? Barbara's shaking her head, yes. It's been an incredible journey, and this place, Earl Sari Swim Stadium, holds a dear place in my heart, having taught Ryan and Pat, my oldest, how to swim here. Uh, it was an incredible experience. I can't wait to get the high dives back so I can work on my triple Lindy. Uh, no high dives, I don't think, right? Oh, uh, bummer. Um, I'd probably say for that way anyway. I don't know how I escaped that. The plunge is more than just a pool for El Segundo. It's where our kids learn to swim, where Olympic athletes train, and where families gather to create lasting memories. This place was built in 1941 during the Works Progress Administration. Can you imagine that? The country was in the depths of decline coming off of the Great Depression. And then we had all these incredible projects, Hoover Dam, projects like this. And this is one of those spectacular projects. So we're all so fortunate to be able to restore it. The plunge is named after Uro Sari, who was an incredible leader, a man who became one of the most accomplished swimming and water polo coaches in California. He trained at least 33 Olympians. Can you imagine that? He led 12 high school teams to CIF championships during his time in El Segundo. He served on the Olympic Water Polo Committee multiple times, and he was named the National Water Polo Coach of the Year in 1964. His dedication to excellence and passion for swimming laid the groundwork for this iconic place, and it's our responsibility to carry that torch forward. We're creating a space that will not only meet modern standards, but will preserve a piece of our history, ensuring that this iconic space continues to meet the needs of today's swimmers and athletes while honoring the legacy of those who came before us. Thank you to all of the stakeholders, city officials, project teams, donors, and community members who have played a role in making this day possible. So, a few of us up here 
Council Member Lance Giroux, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Council Member Ryan Baldino, let's give him a round of applause. Council Member Carol Perstick and former Mayor Brotzen, round of applause. And Mayor Brotzen Pimentel, let's give him a round of applause. Yes, we've been working on this, but we also get paid. We don't get paid a lot, but we get paid. The community members out here like the Bridies, Lee Davis, countless meetings, hours, advocating for this incredible project, working tirelessly to make this happen. And we explored all options. One of the options was raising this property because we're looking at a very significant capital improvement deficit over the next 10 years. But we're finding a way to make it happen. I want to thank Richard Lundquist for stepping up and actually committing to lead the South Bay Health Foundation to make that happen for us and many of our other benefactors that I'm going to name here in a second. I am confident when the, that when the renovation is complete at the end of next year, 2025, the Rural Sari Swim Stadium will continue to be a beacon of community spirit, athletic excellence, and shared joy for many years to come. And before I invite up fellow council member Carol Perstuck, I just want to acknowledge a couple of people that have been instrumental. Jeff Wilson of Chevron, where are you at? Jeff, thank you. Keith Hobbs, new CEO of Torrance Memorial Hospital, longtime executive of Torrance Memorial. Thank you. Also go to school district, the new superintendent, Jason Johnson. Thank you. If you haven't talked to him yet, get lunch with him. He's got some incredible ideas right now. Uh, then we've got Skechers. Is Skechers here? I have them on my list. Thank you very much for being here. Great community advocate everywhere in the South Bay. We really appreciate it. And certainly not, last but not least, Richard Lundquist and Sherry Kramer of Continental Development Corporation. Sherry's over there, and Richard's there here. Thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to taking the plunge myself. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Council Member Perstuck. Let's give her a warm welcome. Thank you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today to finally be kicking off this renovation, a place that holds a lot of memories and meaning for our community. This facility was designed by master architect John C. Austin, who also designed the world-renowned Griffith Absorb Absor Observatory and LA City Hall. When the plunge was opened, it was a state-of-the-art state facility with eight lanes, a large pool, and two diving boards. The stadium also hosted a small separate pool for children, which was unique at that time and was beloved by many kids and learned, many students learned how to swim here. You know, living so close to the ocean, the city has always recognized how important it is that every student learns to swim in our town. So we continue to this day to subsidize our swimming lessons so that every student has a chance that walks through our city that, to learn to swim. And so that's why we're very excited for this plunge to be reopened to continue that endeavor. Over the years, the plunge has drawn thousands of visitors, so much so that in 1994, the city designated it as a local cultural resource. The plunge faithfully provided a service to the residents of El Segundo and the greater Los Angeles area until the doors closed in 2019 due to ongoing maintenance issues and then the pandemic. From the very beginning, this renovation has been a community-driven effort. And a promise by, a for by the former council was made that when we built the aquatic center across the town, we would re renovate this plunge. And I've been working very hard along with my council members to ensure that that happened. And so we're very excited today to make that happen. And I do want to do a shout out to our Parks and Recs Commission. They have been working faithfully to make it happen. Lee Davis, Kelly Watson, uh, Bob Moda, Julie Stolnak, and the team, they just, behind the scenes, they've been working for you as a community to ensure that this plunge gets opened. The vo your voices have shaped this project, ensuring that it reflects the values and the needs of El Segundo. It will once again be a state of art facility for all students and all children and all residents to swim and learn to swim and have a, an area for play and physical fitness. So now at this time, I'd like to pass it on to Cheryl. Sorry. <laughs> Cheryl, I apologize. Nice. Speak down. Good morning. 
My name is Cheryl Ebert, and I'm a civil engineer with the city of El Segundo and the project manager for this renovation. It is my pleasure to stand before you and reflect on the remarkable effort and dedication that have brought us to today. This project represent, not, represents not just the physical construction of a new structure, but the culmination of vision, hard work, and collaboration. I have been asked to give a brief project overview, so I will start from our conceptual design phase. The city hosted a community survey, a virtual meeting, and several meetings with stakeholders and Recreation and Park Commission members to help guide the conceptual design for the plunge. From the people who used the pool, we heard that the design focus should be on the entryway, the locker rooms, and the bathrooms. The pool upgrades, including new gutters for the pool and better water circulation, thermal comfort, and lighting upgrades. Pool spectators recommended improvements to seating options, better ventilation, and private family restrooms in the locker areas. The final design was developed with all this feedback in mind. We are constructing a new lobby entrance that will have open circulation and will allow for an efficient check-in process. The locker rooms will be fully upgraded with private shower stalls, changing areas, and rearranged private family rooms. And spectator seating has been upgraded by providing bleacher seating closer to the small pool, along with a second floor terrace level that will provide space for dry land activities and other pool programming activities. Beyond these improvements, the project will also incorporate required upgrades per modern building and health codes. The entire pool filtration and mechanical system will be fully upgraded. American Disability Act, or ADA improvements, are being made throughout the entire facility. And fire suppression upgrades are being installed. And the exterior of the facility will keep its beautiful historical facade, but will require repairs to the plaster in some areas, fresh paint, upgrades to the windows, new lighting, and ADA improvements to the front walkway and doors. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge a few of our city partners who have brought us to this point with the project. Our mayor and city council members, our city manager, Daryl George, Elias Sassoon, Ali Manzini, and the entire executive team with El Segundo, Arcadis, the project architect, Murillo Construction, the project contractor, Trayaway Construction, the project construction manager, and my colleagues, Joe Lormans, Linnea Palmer, and Marizan Ramos. We could not have done this project without the support from all of you. In closing, and a fun little fact about me, I was a springboard diver in college and have spent many years in the water as a child. Having visited many community pools throughout the Western United States, I'm honored to be involved in this project, and I'm confident that it will not only meet, but exceed your expectations. I look forward to sharing our milestones and successes with you, and thank you again for all of your support. Should I hand it off? Yeah. Okay, great. I can leave on serving. Hand it off to her. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, and now I'd like to introduce a very important member of our community, a great friend to El Segundo, uh, Richard Lundquist. Thank you, Allie. Well, as mentioned, my name is Richard Lutquist, and I'm the owner of Continental Development Corporation, uh, as well as being the chairman of South Bay Sports Health and Recreation. And South Bay Sports Health and Recreation was founded by a number of us in the community uh, to support projects like this. Our Initial project, as many of you know, was the Aquatic Center on Douglas Street, um, and uh, this is this is our second project, and uh, our name implies exactly what this is all about: sports, health, and recreation. And uh, this is a wonderful day for the city of El Segundo. Another great project uh, where we're going to take a state-of-the-art 1940s building and turn it into a state-of-the-art 2020s swimming complex, the Eurosari Swim Stadium uh, within an historic building. So we're very happy, all of us at South Bay Sports Health and Recreation, to 
uh, be involved in this project. And I think with our fundraising efforts, it, it has enabled it to become a state of the art instead of something less, which is exactly why we became involved in the aquatic center so that we could make sure that uh, you know, no penny wasn't spent to make it the best it could be. And that's what we wanted this to be. And that's exactly what it will be. So uh, even before our organization uh, made a commitment to attempt to raise $5 million, uh, Chevron stepped up and uh, made a commitment of 500000 And so we've made that the level for the major, major donors. So I want to thank... Uh, Thanks, Chevron, and, uh, and its new general manager, and uh, also other people here in the audience from uh, Chevron, and then that new general manager is uh, Brian Stock. So Brian is with us today, so thanks for joining us, and, and Jeff Wilson. And also we want to thank uh, Torrance Memorial and Cedar sinai and uh, with us today is Keith Hobbs, the CEO of Torrance Memorial, as mentioned earlier. So thank you, thank you, Keith, for being, being here. And uh, then my company, Continental Development, has made the third commitment of $500,000. So we've got quite a, bit, quite a bit of fundraising to go, but we know with this uh, generous community, both business and residential, that uh, we, will, we will make it to the $5, $5 million level before this building is... Uh, finished and the first person jumps into the swimming pool. So uh, thank you so much uh, for having me say a few words and uh, I'll turn it over to Allie. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Richard. So Richard mentioned the fundraising. Um, so we actually have a, uh, an official capital campaign. Um, so there's plenty of information up here about the campaign and how you can contribute there's a variety of levels, so I'd like to encourage everybody to learn a bit about it and also share with others that you might know that might be interested in supporting this amazing project. And now our, I'm really honored to introduce our next speaker. Um, when I was doing all of the research for the, this project and getting myself acclimated, I've only been here in El Segundo for two years, uh, one of the most fascinating um, things was reading about all of the historic athletes um, that were produced here at the swim stadium. Um, athletes, coaches, Olympians, just an amazing, an amazing group of folks who have really utilized this facility to greatness. Um, so one of those gentlemen is here today and I'm excited to ask him to speak with us, uh, Mr. Henry Stewart. Nice news. Let me see it. I had to write it. There you go, sir. I had to write it all down because there's a lot of stories I could be wander off in directions which I, you probably don't need to hear. But my name is Henry Stewart. I uh, I was the water polo and swim coach that followed Jiro Sorry. Okay, followed Jiro Sorry. Uh, my arrival in the El Segundo coincided with the opening of the plant. Uh, it was owned and operated by El Segundo Unified School District. And previous to that, the founding fathers of El Segundo had something really right with their educational system and constructing a high school uh, here of a classical design. Uh, people have spoken to me lately that said, uh, our school resembles a small university, and the plunge fits snugly right into that landscape. The city itself in 1941 had a population of about 400,000. I'm sorry, 4,000. Yeah, 4,000. Uh, our, our city management, had, if it had a city hall, I didn't know where it was. I don't remember. Uh, that amount, but the, the volunteer, we had a volunteer fire department and we had a very small police force and I think probably less than eight, eight members, but I could not look that up. I, I couldn't find it. The doors of the new plunge opened and it fit perfectly with the schools of El Segundo. 
and the finished plunge was a gleaming jewel in the surrounding area. The decks were tiled, underwater lights lined the walls, a wonderful, under, under, wonderful advanced dressing rooms on both sides of the pool area. In my observation, over the time that I've been to a lot of swimming pools, there was uh, no facility as beautiful and practical as our El Escondo Plunge. Uh, Euro, the school district brought in Eurosari, and that's a, he was of Finnish extraction. He was a New York University graduate, uh, and the intent was that uh, every student in the district would be provided with one class period a week in the plunge, learning to swim or to improve their skills. And Eurosari began that process. Uh, World War II came along, and he was drafted. So after one, one season, he went to India to assist training personnel in water-related activities uh, at an American and British officers club. And in their free time, the Brits often played water polo, and that's where Euro learned the game. The war ended. He came back to reclaim his job at the plunge as a plunge manager. 1946 was his first uh, swim coaching experience with water polo and swimming teams. The team didn't win that first year, but following that, Elton dominated most of the teams that they encountered. At that time, uh, there was less than 12 teams in Southern California that played uh, a water polo. A lot of them had swim teams, but water polo was something new. Um, the sport grew enormously, and the Euro was often called upon to assist lesser schools uh, in, um, in learning what, how, to, how to cope with a game that they weren't really all that familiar with. Uh, many youngsters found their, found their skills useful also in the ocean. Uh, the local lifeguards, L.A. County, L.A. City, Santa Monica, other cities up and down the coast reached out to bring swimmers and water polo players into the fold. Uh, I've often talked to former Els Gunda swimmers, and virtually all of them said that their plunge experience changed something in the way that they were headed. And it comes down to this one phrase, one, uh, one thing leads to another. And to explain it, it means that a little bit of success that was founded uh, in swimming and water polo, and as a person proceeds, more choices and more pathways become available. And Eurosari was a catalyst that encouraged the growth in many directions. Uh, his followers always went for the top. And for me, many of those Olympic-bound athletes were role models to idolize and imitate. Uh, not all are capable of reaching the top level, but to the attempt itself to attain a personal best is worthy of recognition, to say the least. A personal top level is certainly good enough and reason to be proud. The skills acquired through the aquatic experience at the plunge are those which will remain with us for a lifetime. I thank you very much. Okay. Almost done. Almost done. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. We're almost at the end. You guys have done a great job hanging in on this very warm morning. Um, but before we end our short program here and move on to our photo opportunity, I do want to um, thank a local artist, Curtis Green, who's here with us this uh, morning. Um, Mr. Green um, currently has an art exhibit on display at the library called Second Look. And one of the um, pieces that he did is a rendering there of the plunge, which you can see up on the easel. And he is going to be um, selling prints of that um, piece uh, with proceeds going to the plunge renovation project. So thank you for that, Mr. Green. All right. And now I'd like to ask the council members if you would step up to the planters here and with your hard hats and shovels. And we're going to take some photos. <laughs> 